Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. Today, I would like to tell you about the proof. Oh, a proof in a video who will be very, very delicate. <laughs> Actually, a very sophisticated proof um, of the Poincaré conjecture in higher dimensions. Obviously, I will only sketch the proof, so I will omit some, some steps. But in some sense, um, it should be that you can piece it together, not quite yourself, but at least with some literature, if you have seen the proof. And I kind of only really want to um, co communicate the proof strategy. So I'm not really going to show you a proof. Uh, proof is not suited for a video, I think, unless it's really, really cute. There's some really, really cute proofs out there. This one, the idea is brilliant. The idea is really, really brilliant. That's what I would like to stretch. Uh, stress, but the proof itself, it, in the end, you need to work. It's just a very, very uh, sophisticated statement. And what I would like to do is I would like to show you the h cobordism theorem, and say essentially in action, and which, well, towards the Poincaré conjecture. That's exactly the point. Um, essentially, remember that the h cobordism theorem was this really, really strange, strong statement that it, under certain assumptions, uh, homotopy equivalence actually lifts to a homeomorphism, which is, is really ridiculously strong. It's one of the cornerstones of modern algebraic topology or modern geometric topology, maybe even both. <laughs> uh, anyway, so maybe modern topology. Anyway, so let's get started by recalling what the Poincaré conjecture is, and I'm going to prove it, well, proof in quotation marks, obviously, in this video. So Poincaré conjecture, um, essentially is about whenever you have some manifold M and you can shrink all loops to points, then M should be uh, the sphere, in this case S2. So here M, you can't shrink those two loops, so M is not S2. And that's a Poincaré conjecture. In some sense, this is an if and only. So whenever you can shrink loops, um, then your, your manifold is actually trivial. But to be completely precise, that's a three-dimensional version of the Poincaré conjecture. Um, but anyway, so the more general version is that as soon as you have something that is the homotopy uh, of the n-sphere, then it is actually the sphere. Um, okay, so that's that's what it is. So homotopy up to a certain point. And I would like to sketch this proof unless we are in dimension three or four, because three or four are just Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. They are really, really delicate, complicated, exciting. You might say exciting. Uh, depends a bit what you would like to say. Anyway, the Poincaré conjecture, let's prove it in dimension one and two on this slide. Actually, I'm only doing dimension two. I leave dimension one to the interested viewer. So to you, <laughs> whatever. Dimension one is really not hard. Um, dimensions five or bigger, that's what I will go to sketch in the remaining part of the video. And dimension three and four, well, um, I'm still meditating whether I should eventually sketch a proof uh, of those. Um, dimension three, dimension four is still open. Um, but um, yeah, well, it's, it's really, really complicated. Kind of, again, this fun fact that um, here's a question that looks like it should get more complicated in higher dimensions, but it actually doesn't it kind of collapses in higher dimensions in some sense. Anyway, in dimension two, so what we need to do is we need to make sure that all non-trivial manifolds have non-trivial fundamental group, and we can just uh, use the classification that we have seen. Um, so everything is of somehow of this form. This is sphere with punctures and handles, um, and you can check that actually the fundamental group for all of them is non-trivial, except in one case, namely when you have the two sphere itself. So for S2 itself, it's the only case where the fundamental group is trivial, which proves the statement. And that's kind of a weird proof of the statement because you have a classification result and you just look at the list. So that's kind of the easy one. And, and I mentioned higher, three or higher, there's no classification anymore and you need some better tricks. So uh, this was essentially known to Poincaré already. This, sorry, this was known to Poincaré already. Uh, dimension two, and well, certainly even before Poincaré, dimension one, as I said, is not really exciting. Uh, dimension one is more like, what is the correct statement is dimension one? Anyway, I leave that one to you anyway. And then dimension, the all other dimensions were open for ages. So dimension three was solved in 2003, finally, uh, famously by Perelman. 
um, really great work, really complicated and, and brilliant uh, at the same time. Dimension 5 was solved in the 50s and 60s using a very different trick, which just doesn't work in uh, the dimension to layer 4 uh, due to smell, so the H cobot is there. And the way to do it in now in those cases, here the higher dimensions, is as follows. So assume where they have this homotopy n sphere. Um, so some m here. Um, so this is my manifold m. And it, ha it has no punctures. So the punctures will come in in a second. And um, we want to show that m is the sphere. That's the whole point of the form of conjecture. So what you can do is the following. It's a manifold, so there will be some embedded disks. So we, we choose two disjoint embedded disks. It doesn't matter who they are, where they are, as long as they're disjoint, so D1 and D2. And now I just poke a hole, so make this hollow here. So here is hollow now, here is hollow now, and then I call this remaining thing uh, W, which is now a cobotism between D1 and D2. And it turns out that algebraic topology method, so here I'm cheating a little bit, I'm kind of cutting out that state, uh, the stage, uh, the part of the proof, but algebraic topology methods show that W is actually an H cobordism. So it induces um, a lot of uh, homotopies, and not just homotopies, but homeomorphisms. And by classic algebraic topology methods, I really mean like kind of Maya Vitoris type diagram chasing. So things that were known in the 60s for about 30 years. So that's kind of not the interesting part of the uh, proof, so I kind of want to um, not distract you from it, and also it would take me a while to do it. But let me just pretend here, I don't want to distract you. Uh, and that's something that's true, because really the main meat is um, the h cobordism theorem, which comes in here, so you poke it twice, and you can show, because it's a homotopy in sphere, that this piece W is an h cobordism. And that implies a lot. And essentially, you're done at that point, uh, up to piecing things together. So here's our little picture again. And being an H cobordism means that we have this induced uh, homeomorphism. So W is essentially, like in this picture here, is essentially just a cylinder. And a cylinder with two punctures. Right? So you just puncture this, uh, so not a cylinder with two punctures, a cylinder, which is a sphere with two punctures. So the only thing you need to do is you need to fill in the holes in a consistent way and you use um, the, the Alexander's trick to do it, which I'm going to explain on the next slide. Essentially, that's what you need to do. So you, you get from the h cobordism theorem, the W is essentially a cylinder, a cylinder as a twice punctured sphere. You fill in the holes again in a consistent way and you get that M itself is um, home homeomorphic to Sn. Remember that M is everything and W is a twice punctured thing. And if you just say that W is a cylinder and now you fill in in a consistent way in the, in the sense that you can go from left to right in this picture, uh, in the holes again, you get M on one side and the sphere, so here will be Sn on the other side. And that's essentially the proof. And this only works for N big O equal to 5 because the H cobordism theorem requires that. The rest goes actually through uh, for all dimensions, but it's just not helpful um, because you don't have the H cobordism theorem, which does all the work for you. Essentially, it says that your W here is a cylinder and then you're done. The rest is just piecing things together. So in, in other dimensions, it simply doesn't work. It, it simply doesn't work. And that's why it took 60 years from uh, this proof by Smail to the statement in dimension three and dimension four, as I said, is still open. So let me show you Alexander's trick, which is kind of the only uh, step here that I'm not uh, presenting here on the slide. So I don't expect you to read this. Essentially, I say the trick again is M, uh, W is M twice punctured, W by H cobordism is a cylinder, cylinder is a twice punctured sphere, fill in, fill in the punctures, and that's it. Um, okay. So the Alexander's trick is actually a fun, fun thing. Um, it usually goes under this name. I haven't seen another name, but essentially it's a statement that um, if you have two maps on a disk, so really on this filled, filled beast, D2 in this case, and they agree on the boundary, which is S1, 
um, then they're actually isotopic. And I will, you will see in a second, well, isotopic actually means. So homeomorphisms on disks are determined by their boundary, if you want. Or backwards, knowing them at the boundary, you can extend it uniquely to the disk. And that's essentially what happens here. You kind of know it at the boundary because we have punctured it here, and then we can uh, extend it uniquely uh, to the disk. So let me show you the animation, what it means for a map to be isotopic. The animation here of Alexander Strick is linked in the description, so I stole it. Um, essentially here, as you can see here, the outside is the sphere, and the one-dimensional sphere is just a circle. The inside is the disk, and there will be some really crazy things happen at the disk. So the outside boundary will not move, the points here will stay the same, but the inner part will be really, really different, it will be isotopic. And this is illustrating kind of what the map does. So here, just a radial extension. So let's give it a shot. So the boundary will not move, but the, as you can see, the boundary never moves. But in the inside, it could be very different, but still, they're the same at the boundary. So the map you see is isotopic, and here you can just see what isotopic means. It's just kind of a turning of the map itself. Okay, so that's kind of the remaining part to fill in um, the holes again. Okay, so let me summarize Poincaré conjecture, dimension one and two. Dimension one, not very exciting. Dimension two follows from the classification of surfaces. Dimension three and four, hard. Really, really, really hard. Dimension five and bigger, still hard, but with the edge cobordism theorem, not so bad. It's one of those proofs that one can understand if you read it, but at least for me, it would be probably way too hard to come with it myself. It's pretty brilliant due to smell. Um, in the 60s of the last century. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.